In this conference tracker in a nutshell, I'm going to talk about the conference tracker mobile app. This topic also includes an explanation on how to use the mobile app and the scanning process, so you can show this to the staff members you plan on having scan your attendees. You can also show this to your close friends and family members who don't use conference tracker. I try to reach a broad audience. Anyway, I'm going to try to make this video as comprehensive as possible, but I always recommend that you schedule an operator training session with whoever your conference tracker representative is. They'll be able to meet with you and your staff to give you a more thorough explanation as well as answer any questions you may have about the entire process. To get started, you're going to have to start from the website. First, click here on Operators. The Operator role allows users to log into the Conference Tracker app and scan attendees. You're going to have to give your staff members the Operator role if you want them to scan. But wait, Tuan, what if I have a lot of staff members? I don't want to make accounts for all of them. And you're right, it's a lot of work. Also, it's easier to be uh, lazy, so that's why I always recommend making one universal operator for all your staff members. Multiple people and devices can be logged onto one operator account, so everyone can use the same account to scan people in. Just click on create new up here. Give it some random first and last name. I like to use event operator. For the email, it doesn't have to be a valid email, so do something simple like event at operator.com. Now, for the password. You can make it whatever you want, but just remember that you have to give this password to all your staff members. I usually just make it 123 because no one will ever think I'd make such a simple password for such an important account. In any case, click save. You'll have to give this email and password to all your staff members, and then they'll be able to log into the Conference Tracker mobile app with it. And utilizing our advanced technology here we have at the office, we're going to switch over to the iPad. Boom. Crazy how far technology has come, right? Even though I'm using an Apple device for this demonstration, we do have this app available on Android as well. You can find it on the Google Play Store. Shout out to the Android fans out there, I'm not a trader I swear. Anyway, go ahead and go to the App Store. Look up Conference Tracker. It'll be this blue app with a paw print in the middle of it. Do not mistake it for the green app with the paw print, or the orange one. You want the blue one. That's specifically called Conference Tracker. Go ahead and download it. Once it's downloaded, open it up. It will come to the login screen. Log in using the operator account you just made. If you're the admin of the account, you can also log in using the same account you used to log into the website with. After logging in, you'll be met with this screen. These are your rooms. Hopefully you have already uploaded your sessions into the account. The app automatically chooses the correct session to start scanning into based on the room it's in and what time it is. So from here, choose the room with the session you want to scan into. I've created a test room with a test session, so I'll be choosing this room. After you choose the room, you'll go to what I will refer to as the main screen. You'll see the logo of your conference at the top, and below that you'll see what room you're currently in. Below that you'll see the next scheduled session. Since we're currently in the middle of a session, you'll see that session there. Like I said, our app will automatically choose whatever session is signed into based on the room you're in and the current time. The first option you'll see is the scan option. Tap on that and it'll take you to the camera. You might get a prompt asking for access to the camera and allow it if you see that. Scanning is as simple as pointing the camera with the QR code. You'll know when the scan went through because the device will beep and the word signed in will appear. Not very subtle, hard to miss. The scanning itself is pretty smooth and fast, so you can just keep pointing your camera at the upcoming QR codes to keep the line going. You'll also notice this green in arrow at the bottom of the camera. If you tap on that, it'll turn into a red out arrow. This is how you switch between scanning in and out. If the arrow is red, you're scanning out. If it's green, you're scanning in. Next up is this manually button. Tapping this will allow you to scan in or out an attendee by writing in their card number. If you encounter a time where a QR code won't scan, then you can type in the card number located under the QR code to scan them in or out. 99% of the time, you'll never have to use this, but it's here, just in case. Next up is the swipes button. This just shows you how many swipes you have and what card number was swiped into or out of what session. Lastly, we have the sync button. This is actually very important. Syncing the device will download any new information from the Conference Tracker website to the device. So. If the administrator has made any changes to the Conference Tracker account, like adding in an on-site attendee or changing the time of a session, then you need to sync the device. If you don't sync your device, then you'll encounter issues like unknown attendees and not seeing the correct sessions pop up in the list. 
I always recommend that before you start scanning, sync the device and then sync it again after you're finished scanning. Syncing should only take a few seconds, so it shouldn't stop the flow of attendees. Also, you're going to need to be connected to Wi-Fi for syncing to work. Alright, if you tap on this top left icon, you open up the additional menu. You'll get most of the same options that are already present in the main screen, but I want to direct your attention to the two most important ones. The Rooms button will take you back to the Room Select screen. So, if you notice that you've chosen the wrong room, you can use this to choose the correct one. The Workshops button will take you to the list of sessions that's going to occur in the room that you're on on that particular day. This will allow you to switch to what session you want to scan into. I know I said that the app would automatically choose what session to begin scanning into depending on the room and time, but I always recommend that before you start scanning, make sure that you're scanning into the right session for the day. If you aren't, then switch to the right one from the screen. This will help avoid having to clean up too many mess ups after the event is over. And the last thing I want to go over is the settings. Android users, you'll probably see the settings options from the additional menu, but Apple users, you're going to need to go to your settings app. Just scroll all the way down to the bottom until you see Tracker. These are your app settings. Android users will get the same options with the exception of one or two. For most of these, the default options will be fine. The only thing you might want to change is this one. Enable sign in or out windows. If you try to scan someone in late or out early, you will get a warning stating that you're trying to scan a person in or out early. You can still choose to scan them in, but if there are a lot of attendees waiting to be scanned in, then this prompt might become annoying. You can choose to turn it off with this option. Just remember, these settings are on a per device basis, so if you change the settings on one device, you have to do it again on every other device you're using. Anyway, that's mostly what you need to know for operating the app. I know this video is longer than usual, so I hope I didn't bore you too much. The next step in the process will be cleaning up your attendance logs, so you can find that video next in the conference tracker in a natural playlist, or find the link in the description. And as always, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me at conftrack at and I'll answer, as long as I don't somehow get food poisoning again. Have a good one.